welcome back to another episode of The Male Perspective. I am your host, Lana Reed, and today, today on this day, I am so excited and so humbled. I have the Brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Brother Anthony Harris, Brother uh, Charles Scott, and Brother Steve Robinson, and they are representing Pi Upsilon Lambda Chapter out in Prince George's County, Maryland, and they have a very special historical celebration uh, uh, events coming up soon as uh, that we're going to hear about shortly, as well as the work that they are doing in the community uh, that we're going to hear about. But first and foremost, as I always do, gentlemen, I take a quick moment to pause, say thank you to you all for making time for me today. Time is a gift. Once we give it, we cannot give it back. So I truly thank all of you setting aside time uh, to sit down and chat with me. And with that, gentlemen of the black and the gold, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Lon. Awesome. Um, let's get started because I have such a short time with you gentlemen today. Uh, when it comes to the history of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, uh, your chapter uh, can be considered some of the new kids on the block, but that does not mean that you guys did not come out uh, the gate swinging, did not hit the ground running. So as we get started, I was wondering if I could trouble you to share the history of your chapter, how you started, why you got started, and all of that. Great. Um, I'll take that. Uh, Lana, first of all, uh, first of all, may I call you Lana? You can call me Tony. Yes. Okay, uh, Tony. All right. Okay. And uh, we were founded, and thank you so much for, for having us, first of all. Um, our chapter was founded in 1993. On, we were chartered on August 1st, 1993 at the uh, 1993 Convention of the Fraternity in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, 61 members were chart, were part of that charter and it's believed to still today be the largest charter of any chapter that's uh, been created in the fraternity. Uh, throughout the years, as you know, our fraternity is focused on service to the community. Uh, you often hear probably about prominent members of the fraternity throughout uh, Martin Luther King, Thurgood Marshall and the like. Uh, but I always like to say that the brothers who live in the communities uh, where we do the work are also actually very important to our community. So brothers in Prince George's County try to work closely with members of the community to do a variety of things. Uh, we as a national organization have three national programs that we try to carry out or we're required to carry out every year. Uh, the first is a go to high school, go to college program. Uh, and throughout the history of our chapter, uh, we have evolved that program. Uh, we started out with a simple tutoring program uh, where we worked with students in the various high schools throughout the county on whatever particular subjects that they had needed help with. Again, like I said, our brothers are mostly professionals who work in various areas uh, and are able to assist students. Uh, that evolved into a mentoring program. And I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, when I was the director of education for our chapter, uh, I approached one of the school counselors uh, about the possibility of working monthly with young men in school. And she was very adamant about saying, you know, we need somebody in here every week. And, you know, my mother taught me when I was a kid to be respectful. <laughs> so I said to her, yes, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. And I figured, how am I going to take this information back to the chapter? But I did. And the brothers in the chapter were very receptive. And that was really what I consider the birth of our mentoring program for students in the uh, local high school area here. Uh, from that, it evolved into uh, a Botillion program. And I'm sure Brother Scott will tell you much more about that. And today we have a Youth Leadership Development Institute that's done in conjunction with the foundation. And Brother Scott will talk more about that as well. Uh, let me go on to talk about our Voteless People as a Hopeless People program. Again, the idea is basically to provide voter education to uh, members of our community. We've done that in a variety of ways. Mostly what we've done is to uh, have voter registration drives. Uh, and what one thing we found uh, several years back was, you know, we can go into the high schools and register high school students to vote as well. You know, in Prince George's County, you can vote at age 18. Uh, okay. So as long as they turn 18 by the time uh, the election rolled around, uh, we could go into high schools and register. We registered hundreds of students in the various high schools in the county. Uh, and this is over the years, uh, and we've continued with that effort. In addition to that, we've held uh, forums with candidates from Prince George's County Council, uh, invited people out to listen and hear their views, because one of the things that I've always understood is that all politics is local. 
So even though we focus on the national elections and what's going on and who's going to be president and, you know, all the drama that's there, uh, things get done at the local level. Uh, so it's important for people in our community to understand what's going on at the local level, what these candidates are bringing to the table. And we've tried to do that through our candidate forums and other voter education efforts. Uh, third, there's Project Alpha, which is a program that's aimed at 12 to 15 year olds. And it's basically focused on getting them to understand 12 to 15 year old males, getting them to understand their role in terms of relationships with young ladies, in terms of sexual relationships and other things. We work with the uh, with young men through high schools, through middle schools, and we've worked uh, a program at our, our youth detention facility as well um, to talk with males about that. So those are some of the things that we've done over the years. In addition to a number of programs that have been ongoing, we visit uh, seniors at a uh, assisted living facility to talk with them, uh, usually around the holidays, especially. They really love it when the brothers come and sing to them. And, and we yeah, have I saw other you guys activities. testing out your Motown skills there. Oh, you you saw you saw that video? Yeah. Um Motown had called yet though. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we've done is we work with men in men's shelters and whatnot, uh, providing them again with a, a variety of skills. We've done conflict resolution sessions, we've done other sessions on communication skills and provided them with uh, used clothes, used gently used clothing. Uh, so when they have the opportunity to go out on a job interview, they have something nice to wear. Uh, we also do oh, holiday baskets for Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Uh, it started out as a, a drive where we did seven holiday baskets in honor of our seven jewels, the founders of our fraternity. But it has evolved and grown since then. Um, and, and those are a number of things that we've done over the years. Some of those programs have evolved. Again, this is our 30th anniversary coming up on August 1st. First, we've got a lot of celebration planned. Uh, you know, our chapter has grown steadily over the years. Uh, and on August 1st, we're going to take a cruise around Baltimore Harbor and back to the harbor. Baltimore is right up the street from Prince George's County, Maryland. We, we, we're neatly sandwiched between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. So we're going to celebrate that way. And we're going to continue to serve the community as we move forward, because that is what we do as an organization, is provide service to the members of the community where we live. And we want to continue to do that, continue to evolve our programs as we as we continue to grow older. I love it. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Tony, Brother Harris. Uh, mm -hmm. In this process of growing and evolving as a, a chapter, as with anything, there's a learning curve and bumps and bruises along the way. Absolutely. If you were to have some uh, brothers from another area or, or even someplace else in the world, because the reality is Alpha Phi Alpha is now across the globe. But if they were to come to PUL and say, you know, we're, we're thinking about starting a chapter in our area, uh, could you give us some advice? Could you give us some tips? What would you tell them as to what you guys have learned along the way? Well, I mean, you know, yeah, like you say, obviously within any program, there are growing pains, there are missteps that are along the way in terms of what you do uh, sometimes, but, and you learn and grow from those. So I would say to take those opportunities, don't be afraid to step out there and try something different because, you know, uh, I, I think in many ways we're probably considered, uh, our chapters considered trailblazers or innovators uh, in a lot of ways in terms of some of the programs we've done, but, you know, you can't be afraid to go into it and see how things will work. Uh, you know, yeah, sometimes things are not going to work out the way you want, but more often than not, they will. And even if they don't the first time, you take those mistakes, you learn from them, you get up, you dust yourself off, and you continue to move forward because, you know, that that's what we do is we continue to move forward. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And you guys have won chapter of the year quite a few times. Did I read that correctly? We won chapter of the year, uh, Steve, is it twice? Twice, yes. Twice at the regional level. Okay. And, and as an outsider looking at what qualifications does a chapter have to uh, fulfill to get that title? Well, again, we have to demonstrate that we fulfill all of our national programs. Uh, we have to demonstrate other things that we do in the community that sort of go above and beyond those national programs. Uh, and we have to demonstrate to some level uh, the unity of the brotherhood. Uh, uh, and and quite frankly, within Pipes and Lambda, 
uh, I think we have a very strong, strong bond amongst the brothers in that chapter. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention, one of the other programs that is a national program, but it's specifically for brothers, is our Brothers Keepers program. And we've had brothers who have had various needs uh, throughout the time, throughout our times. And brothers have always stepped up to assist uh, other brothers as they need it. Uh, so, you know, those are amongst the things that qualify us for National Chapter of the Year. Again, we're not the oldest chapter in, in the fraternity. Uh, you know, yeah, some some might consider us a newbie on the block still, but we've stepped up and done the work. And That's we've amazing. demonstrated that. Amazing work, amazing work. And one of those uh, pieces, moving parts of uh, PUL is your uh, charitable foundation that uh, Brother Scott is in charge of. So. When did that come about and, and what work that happens there? So as Tony stated, um, the chapter was founded in 1993. Uh, the next year, 1994, the foundation was established. Um, and since then, our mission has been to improve the quality of life uh, for Prince George's County residents through community-based programs, social policy, health advocacy, and educational scholarship. So I think I was on the website and um, I saw that you offer seven different variety of scholarships. Did I read that correctly? We currently offer uh, seven scholarships, yes. Um, so the scholarships are, um, some of them are, are named in honor of um, deceased brothers. Some of them are in honor of um, uh, brothers, uh, deceased family members. And so some of them are just sponsored by uh, the foundation. And so there are quite a few opportunities for graduating seniors that reside in Prince George's County and in DC to apply for scholarships. So our scholarship window opens on Founders Day every year, December 4th, and it, uh, and it closes on that second uh, Friday in March. So any uh, high school senior can go to the website, pulcf.org and apply. Um, I want my scholarship committee to be hard at work reviewing scholarships this year. So the more the merrier. Now, uh, you can be humble uh, if you want to, but uh, I'm going to brag for a second here. You, uh, PUL has at this point given away how much in scholarships? Um, over the years, we've given out about $300,000 in scholarships. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thank you. And, and one of the things that really impressed me, uh, because when you think of scholarships, you tend to think of uh, for your university or something like that, but you do offer for trade school. So if somebody wanted to be a plumber or uh, something like that, you offer scholarships for trade school or vocational for school as vocational. well? So within the last five years, uh, we've come to realize that uh, learning and, and college is uh, ever, ever evolving. Um, how uh, a young person chooses to, to make a living has changed throughout the years. And so while we uh, we do honor and recognize going to a four-year university. We also realize that there are young people attending uh, community college. And so we have scholarships for that as well. Awesome. That is phenomenal. That is truly, truly phenomenal. I, I love that. Um, so what are the requirements for the uh, youth in your county to have to fulfill to, to obtain a scholarship? So on the website, uh, the applicants can go in and view the requirements. Some of them are, uh, they vary, but the main uh, tenants are uh, 2.0 uh, GPA minimum. Um, they require a resume, um, recommendation letters, and they can list all of their extracurricular activities. So the healthier the packet, the more likely um, the scholarship will be awarded. I, I do want to say that through the years, our um, our aim has varied. And so one year we may pay more attention to the higher GPA. Uh, and one year the scholarship committee may go with uh, the person that, that sells themselves in the best capacity. Um, they might not have the strongest GPA, but they're an overall better student or better all potential. And so uh, this year we're focusing on, on the all around academic, um, who has the best GPA, who has the, uh, the most ec extracurricular activities and who writes that best resume. Um, we have learned a lot uh, reviewing the scholarships that there are some excellent writers in Prince George's County. And so it's definitely a, a, a treat to see how they come across our desk. Okay, awesome. Uh, just curious sidebar question. It's been a long time since I've been up that way. Prince George's County uh, County is predominantly uh, us. 
It is, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, predominantly <laughs> Black, yes. And so, um, as you mentioned that, um, we are highly invested in Black males, of course. And so, um, for all the viewers, your viewers out there, um, if you are a Black male in high school, I want you to apply for our scholarships. Okay, okay. So we go to the web. So let me, I, I will ask that at the end, of, but give it to me one time because I think I read or saw that the Charitable Foundation has its own website for the scholarships to uh, to apply for scholarships. Yes. Um, it's P-U-L-C-F dot mm -hmm. org. And, and one more time, you said the process for applying for the application starts when again? It started on December 4th and it ends the second Friday in March. So I believe that's okay. March 10th. Okay, so we got to get the kids get going here March 2nd. Okay, all right, okay. Now, um, when you, uh, Brother Harris was talking about uh, PUL being at the forefront and, and innovative or whatever, one of the things that I saw you guys were doing uh, that I found very unique, you guys recently started your own podcast. So did I hear that correctly? Oh, yeah, yeah as, as, uh, you, you want to talk about this, Steve, or you want me to talk? Go ahead, Tony. You can talk about it. Yeah, as part of our 30th anniversary celebration, yeah, we we uh, started a podcast uh, where we featured different topics. That uh, uh, you know, the first one focused on the evolution of PUL. The others are focusing on our various community service efforts uh, each month. So you'll hear brothers talking about uh, either again, like I said, you know, uh, Thanksgiving uh, or the holiday Christmas drive. You hear them talking about community service in particular, and you'll hear them talking about some of the other programs that we uh, have. Uh, we have two, what I like to think of, or we, we've referred to as signature programs uh, that we'll have podcasts on later during this fraternal year, which means around May or June. Uh, we have, we'll have a men's health forum that we've been doing for several years now. And we also have a Father's Day breakfast uh, because, you know, again, like I said, Father's uh, you know, Mother's Day is, is really celebrated quite widely, uh, and, and we appreciate that. You know, I mean, uh, you know, we, we have wives and, and, and significant others, and we certainly want to celebrate the ladies in our lives. Uh, but fathers, uh, we found several years ago, probably don't get the same level of recognition. Uh, so we started that particular program several years ago. Uh, and we, you know, unfortunately, again, we had a brother who who uh, uh, died unsuddenly, and he was the one who actually came up with the idea who uh, about the program. So we named that program in his honor. It's the Charles Riley uh, Father's Day Breakfast, uh, and we do it every year. We have uh, people there talking about men's issues, and with the Men's Health Forum, we, again, focus on a variety of men's health issues, including mental health uh, issues. Uh, you know, and trying to get black men to understand we need to go to the doctor uh, because, you know, a lot of men in particular, uh, not just black men, but men in particular uh, probably tend to sort of shy away from those sorts of things. But there are a number of things we need to be taken care of. So, um, you know, that th th those are some of the things that the podcast will cover. Okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. And, you know, I know how uh, competitive uh, men tend to be. So I'm going to look up in about three or four years and all the other chapters are going to have podcasts as well. So uh, you guys can be trailblazers in that area too. So I, I, I'm pretty sure. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so besides the podcast and your signature programs, uh, in your opinion, what are the things that PUL apart from the other chapters? Let's do some bragging here. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, it's uh, so from the perspective of uh, what we do to try to impact our community, uh, there are several things we start out planning uh, during the summer about how we're going to uh, conduct business uh, through the fraternal year uh, starting in September. Um, and just this past September to December, we've had uh, several uh, events that have uh, contributed to the impact our, our community, particularly in uh, dealing with issues like food insecurities. Um, we have, uh, in addition to the Thanksgiving and Christmas baskets, we also support uh, four, four families within Prince George's County uh, on a monthly basis where we deliver uh, uh, boxes of, of groceries to those families. 
so that we provide impact for them, not just during the holidays, but all year round. And so we partner with our uh, foundation uh, to support support those, those families uh, each month with groceries. Um, we've also partnered with uh, the Fort Washington alumni chapter of Dr. Sigma Theta the last two years uh, to put on a toy drive where we've uh, distributed over 800 toys to eight different elementary schools within the county uh, to ensure that kids who may not have be fortunate enough that they get they have something to open up on, on Christmas morning in terms of a gift. Um, we've also done uh, partner with our uh, our uh, AKA chapter here, one of the AKA, AKA chapters here, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Iota um, Gamma Omega chapter uh, to give away school supplies. Uh, uh, we, we started off, kicked off our fraternal year with, with that event at one of the local elementary schools uh, here in the county. Um, and in addition, uh, we also partnered with our uh, foundation to give away uh, over 300 coats uh, to both elementary, middle, and high school students within the county. We want to make sure, you know, for for those those kids who. Uh, have those uh, needs that you know everybody deserves a warm coat, uh, and we and we don't accept um, used coats. We we purchase brand new coats uh, for for those those kids and distribute them, um, and we distribute it to eight different schools this this past uh, actually a couple of weeks ago. And so I think from from our perspective in impacting the youth in our county, as well as Tony mentioned with the Men's Health Forum. Uh, in our Father's Day breakfast, we try to, to impact uh, as much as we can from both uh, a student level and uh, adults within our with, within the county. Um, one of the things from in terms of our uh, voter registration uh, initiatives, this past uh, voter cycle where we had uh, county executives <laughs> come up for re-election, we conducted a, a partner with our D9 uh, coalition for civic engagement, uh, had to uh, put on uh, candidate forums for our county executive and, and county council members. And we also did a, a candidate forum for at the governor level. Uh, and so we try to impact both our local uh, and, and state uh, um, uh, elections as best we can to get information out to our, our community and just educate them on uh, the civic engagement things that they should be concerned about that we're concerned about as, as a fraternity. I don't think you keep on saying try. I don't think you guys try. <laughs> I think you guys do and you guys succeed. So it's not a matter of trying. I think you guys are, you're doing, you're doing it, you're doing it and you're doing it well. You're doing it and doing it well. well um, we appreciate that. Hey, 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 <laughs> can I just add one thing? Uh, yes. Brother Robinson mentioned the candidates forum at the governor's level. Uh, we want to take a moment to brag. Our new governor, Wes Moore, is the first African American governor of the state of Maryland, and he's also a member of our fraternity. You know, okay. was, you mentioned he was he's an, a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, but I also read on your website that uh, various members of PUL have moved up into various leadership ranks within Alpha Phi Alpha as well. Did I read that correctly? Over the years, yeah, yeah, we we've had several members of our chapter who have served either the executive uh, director level. Uh, we have a couple of brothers in our chapter who are members of the uh, executive team at, at national headquarters now. Uh, brother Denny Johnson is a director of membership services, and uh, brother Eric Webb is a, our editor to the Sphinx magazine. Uh, but over the years, yeah, we we've had various members in our chapter who have. Uh, worked at national headquarters uh, in one capacity or another. Okay. We ain't saying nothing to the other chapters, but we saying stuff to the other chapters. They don't have to step up. They can have to move for something, something to catch up now. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're all brothers and we, we, we yeah. remain brotherly with, with every chapter well, at all times. <laughs> now, let me circle back because uh, Brother Robinson was saying something about the youth and I saw... Uh, one of the videos I saw was uh, Botillion. Is that part of the uh, Charitable Foundation? 
Uh, so the the charitable foundation right now we have the uh, youth leadership development institute, and so where whereas the botillion used to be a a big coming out, um, we've kind of uh, scaled back on that for now, okay. and um, the culminating event at the end of uh, Wild Eye is normally a banquet uh, that uh, the the graduates or the the children and the, the young men in the program. <laughs> Uh, they're able to reflect on all their accomplishments that they've accomplished uh, during that particular year. And so we've developed a pipeline. Um, Wild DI is for the young men that are in middle school, and then the high school program is Legacy. So Wild DI is ran by Brother David Smith, and the Legacy program by Brother Delano McRaven. Uh, the, the Legacy program um, is not as structured as Wild DI. It gives uh, the, the teenagers or the high school young men a chance to uh, have big brothers and to have uh, men uh, be able to influence um, their, their potential and outcome. And so the we talked about scholarships. The idea behind this is YLDI legacy and these young black men uh, become the recipients of our scholarships. So um, how early can parents get their young men involved in these programs? I think you said it, but just refresh my memory. Uh, Wild DI starts in sixth grade. Sixth grade, okay, all right, all right. So let me ask you guys this as I start to wrap up, because I think I'm, I'm going over my time here. Um, you guys uh, pour so much into the community. Um, it, it just the little that you have shared with me, uh, just so much. And that can be, draining, ex exhausting. So as a brotherhood, what do you guys do collectively uh, within your chapter to make sure the brothers are emotionally, mentally, psychologically shored up so you guys can go out there and continue to pour into the community? What, what, what events, activities do you guys have just for you? Yeah, that's a great question, Anna. Um, so we we uh, definitely care about each other, and I think PUL particularly uh, definitely cares about our brother. We have a, a, a health and wellness committee that just focuses on the physical and mental health of our brothers. Uh, we uh, That committee meets monthly. We have monthly brotherhood check-ins uh, where they check in on, uh, on each of the brothers. We also uh, have um, instituted the last couple of years um, these brotherhood walk and run challenges where we challenge each other to get healthy uh, and to um, and we the campaign that we started is called uh, PUL 1906 do something and so we challenge brothers to, to get out there uh, and those who run uh, we we give them opportunity to see how many uh, within a like a three month time frame how many miles they can run and then we have uh, for those brothers like myself who prefer to walk uh, we uh, challenge those brothers to 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 walk we push each other uh, to and actually it's, it's been a great campaign for us to get healthy uh, within our within brothers within our chapter. Uh, we also partner with uh, other chapters uh, in the county, um, and we uh, once a year we go down and do a walk on the mall, and we invite, invite brothers from other chapters to join us, uh, and then we do about a three to four mile uh, walk uh, just to keep brothers uh, healthy. We definitely are concerned and understand that both mentally and physically that to do the work that we we doing, we have to check in on each other. We have to be concerned about. The, each other's health and well-being, and so we try to, to implement implement that on a monthly basis, where we're constantly checking in on brothers and doing something to make sure that we're physically fit. Awesome, because we need hey, you can guys. I piggyback on that, brother? Can I piggyback on what you had to say, brother? You know, sure. um, in our chapter, we have age ranges anywhere from like the mid late twenties to uh, us more seasoned brothers who are, you know. <laughs> Who are retired and enjoying life, uh, and there are brothers who actually, I mean, you know, in addition to being brothers of chapter, you know, we, we have several close friends. You know, uh, some brothers have, you know, friends in various age groups and whatnot. I mean, you know, for instance, some brothers will just get together and go out and have a good time when they when they feel like it. You know, um, you know, myself and a few other brothers from the chapter will go to uh, the University of Maryland football games. 
you know, we always make sure to tailgate because the University of Maryland is always going to start out with at least four losses every year. So, uh, <laughs> but we have a good time, you know, and brothers, brothers in the chapter do that because I think, uh, I, I think as somebody alluded to, uh, you know, we're a chapter where brothers look out for each other. And I think, you know, we actually like each other, uh, you know, so, so it, it's sure. not a matter of, you know, just coming to do the work and then going home and waiting for the next chapter meeting. Yeah. You know, very, very much so. I think our chapter was founded as a reclamation of chapter as well. And so we have brothers during the term year rejoin us, brothers who may have not been uh, active um, in the fraternity uh, for quite some time, but we always welcome those brothers back and into the fold. Uh, and then we have a whole committee that's uh, focused on uh, reclamation and retention. Uh, where we have events where we go to the, a, um, the Wizards or the WNBA uh, games, as well as the uh, baseball games. And so we, we, and we bring those uh, events for not just brothers, but we also uh, uh, invite brothers' families uh, to come out and enjoy those events as well. And so we have uh, plenty of opportunities that are available to, for brothers to fellowship collectively as brothers, as well as with our families. About how large is the chapter now at this moment? Uh, at the moment, we are at 141 members in our chapter. Okay, a lot, a lot of hands to uh, do the work, do the work. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, before I ask you gentlemen, um, my random question here, uh, I have one more question I wanna ask you uh, all. And uh, all of us here are from black families, biological black families. I'm assuming all of us here are from black families. Um, mm -hmm. And it, within our culture, sometimes we have problems coming together, unifying for even the simplest of things, like getting whose house Thanksgiving dinner is gonna be at, and who's gonna bring the macaroni and cheese and who's gonna pick up grandma Betty and bring her to the house. You know, so we, sometimes within our families, we have problems getting along for a day, much less a year. How is it that Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated has uh, consistently in such a large portion managed to get such a large selection of men to uphold its core values for over a hundred years now when we often come from families who can't even do that? What, what are your opinions on how, how, how are you guys still unified? Stay unified. I think Am for I uh, you... yeah. Go ahead. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell me. I think the the key thing for us uh, is is the brotherhood, right? I think that's what we um, what we hang our hat on. Um, as you know, uh, you, you don't get to pick your your family members, and and although we certainly have some say in who who joins our our our. Um, who become members of our fraternity, once we become members, we, we're always connected as brothers. That's, that's the thing that we remember first and foremost. Uh, when we, we have, definitely we have debates and discussion, but we enter those debates and discussions knowing that at the end of the day, when we leave that room, we're leaving brother, as brothers. Uh, and that's first and foremost for us, is that we treat each other with, with respect, uh, and we remain connected as a brotherhood uh, through thick and thin. So I think that's most important. Uh, Brother Scott and Brother Harris could probably give you uh, more details about that. But from my perspective, it's the brotherhood. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, it's the brotherhood. And again, that goes beyond just our chapter, Pi Epsilon Lambda. You know, we do a lot of work in this community, but that's not to say that the brothers in the other chapters don't do as much work in their communities as well. And we certainly partner with them on occasion uh, to to do that work. You know, we're, we're in the Washington, D.C. area. You know, there are several chapters of Alpha uh, throughout this area. And we certainly have opportunities to do mix and mingle with those brothers. Uh, and first and foremost, you know, the brotherhood is, is the thing, you know, we always remain brotherly toward one another. And we're all focused on making sure that we're about trying to uplift our communities. Uh, you know, if if there are ideas to be had from one chapter to another, we share those ideas, we share our ideas with them and they share their ideas with us. Uh, so it all makes for, you know, a stronger community overall. 
I love it that you guys are in the community doing the good work. Um, I'm going to ask my, my uh, well, wait a minute. I didn't, I did Brother Scott want to say something? I didn't want to cut him off, did he? I'll, I would just say that uh, we, we all realize that uh, peace and cordiality uh, resides amongst us. And uh, when we enter into our uh, engagements, we, we're going to always depart as friends. And so that's just, just at the core of who we are as a fraternity and, and brothers. Awesome. I have uh, watched you guys over the years from undergrad to grad to now in my season years. And I have always, always been so impressed, always been so impressed. Just don't tell the rest of the uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you so much. Let me ask my random question and then I'm going to ask you guys to tell us how we uh connect with you in your area you guys uh, are the celebrations the 30 year celebrations open to all and everybody uh yeah most of them are can, can we buy yeah. like a ticket and donate for i mean the charitable foundation and stuff can we do that most definitely um no. most can definitely. Donate. Uh, what? Oh, i was going to tell you how you can donate but I, I can wait okay let me do this first and then we'll, we'll do the donation thing here okay let's see what we got and like I said, you know, if you want me to ask another question for the other guys, we'll, we'll do that. Okay, so when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you uh, grew up? <laughs> we'll let Tony take that question first. <laughs> <laughs> it's been such a long time since I was a kid. I I'm not sure I remember. When I, was, when I first went to college, uh, my idea was to become an architect. Uh, okay. However, uh, math is not my strongest suit, mm -hmm. and you have to be very strong in, in mathematics to do that. Uh, now, if I was starting all over again, I could probably, you know, meet that challenge no problem because, you know, as you mature, you, you know, you do things differently. Mm -hmm. But I decided after that, you know, what else am I good at? And I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm good at writing. So I spent four years working as a journalist in the Washington, D.C. area. So does you want me to pull another question for the next one, or is that one good for somebody else? Next what, hold on, hold on, let me pause. Next let me pause one. real quick. You said architect. Did I read one of the uh, brothers from your chapter was the architect of um, the, the Martin Luther King Memorial? Yes. Oh, okay. 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 So now, brother Scott, did I hear you want to step to the plate on this one? Uh, give me another one. Oh, yeah. do you know? Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. You sure you won? Go ahead. Okay. Yes. You, you don't have to say the name. You don't have to say the name. You don't have to say the name. Do you still remember the name of the first person you had a crush on? Uh, <laughs> I do. Let's go back to the other question. Um, <laughs> when I was young, I wanted to be a, a lawyer. Um, and so I'm not a lawyer. I'm a, a real estate uh, agent. I'm a realtor here in the DMC area, uh, DMV area. So no, I'm not, not what I wanted to be. <laughs> okay. But yes, I do remember my first crush. Yeah. Lana, I'll take that question, the first crush, because uh, I met my wife in college. Uh, and we, she was actually uh, an Alpha sweetheart. Um, but we met prior to me joining Alpha Phi Alpha and her being, being a sweetheart. And so uh, as we spent our time uh, together in college, uh, she was the uh, president of our sweetheart um, organization, and I became the brother liaison to that organization. And so, uh, to get close to her just by happenstance. Uh, I think she. I think it was. A, I think it was a mutual thing. Uh, <laughs> if, if, if you ask her, it probably been it would probably be as she's saying it was me. <laughs> um, but I think it was a mutual a mutual thing. Uh, and we've been together ever since uh, ever since college. And so oh, so uh, I have to say that that was probably my first. first uh, I love it. I love it. All righty. So give me the lowdown on how we make donations. Um, you guys have a fundraiser, uh, a masquerade ball coming up soon. Um, you know, if we want to connect and if we have somebody in the area uh, that want to apply for scholarship, just just give us the whole lowdown on how we we get with you guys. Uh, sure. For general uh, information about what the chapter is doing, you can go to pul1906.org. All 
all the information about what we do as a chapter, um, our, our fundraising events, uh, show our uh, masquerade ball Ivies and Ice, that which we're partnering with the uh, Iota Gamma Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Will be on February 18th. You can go to our website uh, and click on the link there to purchase tickets. We'd love to have you come out and right after uh, right after Valentine's Day and celebrate with us uh, in that event. Um, Brother Scott can tell you how to make uh, donations to our foundation. Um, you can check out the foundation, uh, of course, on PULCF.org, donate on the website, or you can cash up us at uh, PULCF. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook. Our page is Pi Upsilon Lambda Charitable Foundation. Uh, you can also check out the chapter on Facebook and Instagram, uh, PUL1906. Um, uh, we're giving out scholarships, and we need money, so please donate. All right. And that money, a little bit goes a long way. Uh, so, yeah, so, so gentlemen, I, I'm just so humbled. I'm so pleased. I'm so tickled. I'm just, I, I just, I don't have enough emotions. I, I just, I know you guys hear it all the time. I know you guys hear it all the time. Just, just thank you for the work that you do. Uh, it, it, it just, it, it's so needed and I know you guys are going to keep on doing it I don't have to tell you to keep on doing it because that's what just what alpha men do but it always it always helps to hear you know a hand clap every now and then so from my little small corner of the world just thank you and kudos and amazing and, and I'm just so impressed I'm just just so impressed just amazing stuff you guys are doing. thank, thank you, you very much thank you thank you. yeah and here's a you know, happy 30 years and here's to 30 more and then so, you know? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That is all for this week's episode of The Male Perspective. I'm your host, Lana Reed, and I will see everybody next time. <laughs>